In three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contract Committee for Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13, 2020 board meeting in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely. Subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present. And that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's hybrid meeting is being held both virtually and in person and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jones. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Ms. Hen. Ms. Hen. Mr. Kuhn. Here. Mr. Offerman. Here. Thank you. Ms. Slate, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mildred Charlie Green. Present. Dr. Boswell McComas. Dr. Boswell McComas. Ms. Rung Far Sangaroon. Here. Thank you. Ms. Lowry. Present. Dr. Scriven. Present. Dr. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. Ms. Byers. Present. Dr. Raquel Jones. Dr. Jones. Dr. George Roberts. Present. Thank you. Ms. Barbara Burnop. Present. Present. Mr. Kevin Connolly. Mr. Connolly. Mr. James Corns. Present. Mr. Dixit. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Mr. Plate. Present. Dr. Grimm. Present. Present. Ms. Karen Levenstein. She's present. Thank you. Are there additional staff participating that were not mentioned? Please state their names. Dr. Eric Minus. Thank you. Anyone else? Mike Kim Sanner. I received Dr. Zorchin's name, but someone else I missed. Kim Sanner. Thank you. Miriam Yarbrough. Thank you. Asha DeGans. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Um, welcome everybody, and I apologize for the technical difficulties. Mr. Dixit, please state your name for the record and please proceed with presenting the first contract. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pete Dixit, 
And the first contract you have, I believe, is KSH30519. And that's for personal protective equipment. It is to increase the contract spending authority from $150,000. So it's going to increase from $200,000 to $350,000. Are there any questions, committee members? Please state your name and question. There being no question, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the second contract. The second contract is JME 527-21 is for motor oil, diesel, exhaust fluid, coolant related items. It's a competitively bid contract and it's used by the vehicles from facilities uh, and transportation. Requ approval is requested for a five year contract term with one recommended bidder in the amount of $1,940,000. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Dixit, I do have a question. Um, this was competitively bid, work, and this was one of the lowest responsive bidder? That's correct. And, and the number, number of vendors that requested solicitation were 10, and we received one bid. You only received one bid out of 10? That's right. Okay, that's why there's no vendor evaluation, correct? Uh, that uh, question is for Mr. Saris. George, you want to handle that question? Uh, correct. So, um, this is a, a new contract, and so um, this vendor, under our current board policy and superintendent rule, the, the evaluations are completed at the end of the contract. Um, and let's just let me just double check. That's correct. So, uh, but I do want to emphasize that uh, no contract is brought before this board in a case in which there's an unsatisfactory vendor performance. Okay, thank you, Mr. Saris. Sure. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the third contract. The next contract is JBO 722-20. This is for domestic water heater preventive maintenance, repairs and installation. And the contract is consent to the assignment of this contract from M&E sales to Patapsco Mechanical LLC. So the company has been acquired. Uh, and so there's the, this, the name change of the company. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Are there any questions, committee members? There being no questions, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next contract is JBO 702-19. This is for HVAC repairs. And again, the contract is for consent to assignment from m &E sales to Patapsco Mechanical LLC as the result of an acquisition. There is no change in in the amount. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, any questions? This is, I, this is Rod McMillian. I have a question. Please go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Dixit, last meeting I questioned you on how many groundsmen vacancy positions we have open. And you didn't know at the time. Do you? Can you tell me now how many we have? I don't know at this point. This contract is for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So the question you are asking is not related to this contract, but I will get that information and send it to you. I apologize. I was one ahead of you. I'm sorry. That's on me. Thank you. That's okay. That's okay. No problem. Um, hearing no other questions, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. So the next contract is JME 52421. 
that's for on call mowing, maintenance, and repairs of natural turf fields. The approval is requested for a five year contract with two recommended bidders. Uh, the services will include like site assessment, seeding, sod, fertilizing, watering, trimming, weeding plant, and insect eradication. So this is requested because of the shortage in staffing. We are working with HR to fill those positions that Mr. McMillian just talked about. So the contract will only be used when, uh, when we have need for the services and there are vacancies. And Mr. McMillian, I'll get back to you about the number of vacancies. I don't have that at this point. Mr. Dixit, this is Mr. Kuhn. I wanted to ask a question about um, the mowing because this this basically is a landscaping contract. And last month we approved ARA 20821. It's a mowing contract for $259,000 for I believe it was 15 weeks. And I believe that's through the end of this month, if I'm correct. Is is this new contract in essence um, an extension of this contract that we're talking about? I'm I, I'm just meaning that since we the you've described this as we don't have the people to do the work, therefore we need to contract it out. And now we have a seven million dollar contract in front of us saying we don't have the people. And for the next five years, we want a contract in place because we don't believe we're going to have enough people in five years or this is just a backup. I'm just I just curious as to. So the contract that you had the, that we had before was for a specific time period. This contract is for five years. So the seven million dollars that you see is for a period of uh, five years. So that comes back to about a million point two uh, or a little over that per year. This will cover moving for 40 to 50 sites weekly over a 28 week mowing season. So this is a lot more, um, lot more services than what we had for the contract before. So uh, I, I think I answered that question. Did I answer that question that you're looking for? I believe you did. I guess my my concern is so this talks about 40 to 50 sites. We have well over that, right? So we're just kind of plugging holes here. Is is the expectation that we're always going to need the services cuz you're asking for a 5-year contract here. That's so if this was like a just a like the last one we did last month was just a, a quick gap fill, right? Yeah. Now you're asking for a contract with a significant amount of money associated with it for five years because you're saying we don't have personnel. That's right. That it seems like a long time from so, my perspective. So when we look at the trend of our vacancies and our ability to attract people for this classification, we had consistently high rate of vacancies. Um, I just received a text saying that we have 42 vacancies at this time. So it seems like large amount, but when you look at the salary of those people where we have vacancies, uh, it's pretty much in line. So this 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 money replaces people, but if we can fill those vacancies, we will not, we'll not need these services. And we are actively working with HR to fill those vacancies. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is ASI 816-21 for screen ball diamond mix. So the contract will provide the purchase of soil and sand mix for baseball diamonds for 175 schools and more than 200 ball diamonds. The contract amount is 375,000. The term is for five years and based on our annual expenditure of 60 to $80,000, uh, we should be able to uh, 
to take care of our ball diamonds within this amount. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Joes, I have a question for Mr. Dixit. Yes, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Dixit, is it accurate that Recreation Parks takes care of the elementary school sites, ball diamonds? That is accurate, but I'm not sure if they take care of the sand mix for sand for the baseball diamonds, but I can check that. Thank you. And also I answered your question about the number of vacancies. So I want to make sure you got it. It's 42 vacancies at this time. Very much. So. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is ASI 820-21 for tennis and basketball court renovations. This is a new competitively bid contract for repairs to school tennis and multi-use courts. It will also include basketball rims and basketball court repairs and tennis court repairs, um, any cracks, uh, providing stone dust overlays, macadams, resurfacing, ceiling coats, and line marking. The contract amount is million two fifty. The term of the contract is five years, and we are hoping that some of the money will come from the capital program that board has approved from the local funds. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Sorry about that. Um, committee members, are there any questions? Uh, uh, Mr. Dixit, this is Mr. Kuhn. I, I have a question. Is this simply um, money for repairs or is there any kind of a plan in place to address perhaps um, resurfacing tennis courts and basketball courts? So, Part of the answer is that we have a plan for taking care of the basketball repairs, basketball court repairs, not the surfacing, but the rim and the backboard. We have uh, a plan for tennis courts, uh, which takes care of certain number of tennis courts every year. Uh, obviously, a lot to do with the uh, with the price for each court, which varies depending on the market. So we try to do as many as we can. So in, based on some of the historical data, we spent 375,000 for court repairs and replacement in fiscal 19. And about $475,000 with an average of 158 annually um, over the last three and a half years. So it is kind of, uh, some planning and some as needed. So could you just explain uh, so we have an idea like how many tennis courts do we get for, you know, and how many basketball courts are we getting, you know, resurfaced and upgraded or fixed for for the those funds? Because it's it's kind of a number without any understanding. So we are going to take care of all basketball courts from the rim and the backboard. So that answer is simple. And when it comes to tennis courts, we have 243 tennis courts. And average cost to renovate four tennis courts is $200,000. So you can imagine, you know, there's only so much we can do in the amount of money that, that we have. So our pri our priority this year, based on the conversation at the board, is to take care of the basketball, uh, to make it playable for as many students as we can, and then we'll try to take care of as many tennis courts as we can. Thank you. Um, are sports boosters organizations and parks and recs involved in in providing any funding or support for these activities? So if from my recollection, uh, boosters have been involved in raising funds for uh, the track and the stadium development uh, for high schools in a lot of cases, but not as much as for tennis court. Uh, 
uh, on a limited basis for basketball, but I don't have the firm numbers to share with you. Okay, and do you have the you have the number of tennis courts? Do you have the number of basketball courts outside outside basketball courts we have? We have 174 basketball courts, and we have 144 multi-use courts. So that would be both. Yeah, that's right. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, please proceed with presenting the next contract. So the next contract is JME 52321. It is for the uh, partial roof replacement for Overly High School. Uh, this roof was not included in the renovation of the high school at the time renovation was done. We have received several bids. Uh, if I recollect right, it's uh, uh, seven bids and they are quite tight, but when you take the max and min, it's anywhere from 3.1 to 4.6. Uh, so that's quite a bit of, but there were a lot in the middle, which is 3.1. There were three bidders that were within 3.1 to 3.2 range. So it's a good, good bidding market for roof. Prices have gone up from the last roof. So we are requesting your approval to award it to the lowest bidder, Simpson of Maryland Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, I do have a question, but committee members, if you have any questions, um, please go ahead. Oh, Mr. Dixit, um, this is Mr. Kuhn. I have a question about how I, I understand you have like the price and then you have the contingency amount. I feel as if we've had this conversation before, um, unfortunately. Um, um, I'm going to ask it again. When you actually you know, accept the bid and you write a contract. Is the contract simply for the 3.1 million dollars and the contingency is just a hold back that we have, but it it's not like, oh, you know, here's this extra money in the contract and we can easily apply it. And it wouldn't, it would need a change order of some sort to be added. Is that, is that accurate? That's correct. And I'd like Ms. Rangfar Sang Roon, since she's here to help me with the answer. My understanding is that the contract is for the base amount and for the change orders, uh, each and every change order uh, is approved within that 10% con contingency that board approves. So Anna, if you can confirm or, 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 or deny what I'm saying, I would appreciate it. Mr. Plate, are you here? Do you know if the contract is on the base bid or it includes contingency? Yes, sir, I am here. And yes, the contract that is signed is for the base bid amount of $3.134 million. And then as, <clears throat> as um, contingency is needed, reviewed and approved by the numerous staff members, then the contract and the purchase order are increased an appropriate mount based on that change order. Thank you very much. So Mr. Kuhn, did we answer your question? You did, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hen? Thank you, Ms. Joes. Good afternoon, Mr. Dixit. I hope you can hear me. Good afternoon. Will there be an opportunity for this work to be completed when school is not in session? Yes, uh, the, the answer is yes, we make every effort to complete the project during summertime. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we missed a lot of summer this year, and even the summertime, there's school going on there. So uh, we are going to gradually do it um, uh, so that there's minimum disruption to the instructional process. But this is an emergency situation, so we have to take care of that route. Uh, our completion date schedule is July 2022. So some of the work will be done in, after, in evening hours, afternoon hours. Some of the work will be done during this summer and then some during next summer. OK, thank you very much. Mr. Dick said um, <clears throat> this contract, and I don't know if you have that information handy, how uh, far apart was it from the engineer's estimate, the lowest bid responsibility? 
it's about 10% more than what we were hoping. But this is generally happening in construction, as you have seen in the news. Uh, construction market is uh, the cost is going up and up. So we'll see that trend, we think, in future also. So that's something we don't control. Uh, when Whenever we have contract that's over our estimates and over the budget, we work with the county to move funding from the savings that we have achieved in other contracts. So that's when it helps. So this contract is uh, unfortunately uh, over the budget and over the amount that we were hoping we'll get by about 10%. Well, 10% I don't think is, is much. Uh, you usually do have 10 to 20% fluctuation. Um, so my question then is when you had the uh, replace the renovation for Overly High School, the roof was not replaced. You just not had rent. At that yeah. time, this roof was not eligible for, for state funding, so we did not apply for it. And it was in reasonable good condition. And, and what's a partial roof replacement as opposed to a full roof replacement? Well, it only means that it's not the whole building, but part of the building. So some of the different buildings, different part of the buildings have roofs of different age. And state funding is for roofs that are older than 15 years. Only then we are. So we took care of the other roofs. We did not take care of this roof, this part of the roof. And that's what the partial term indicates. OK. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. So the next contract is ARA 222 for offsite forest planting, forest buffer mitigation and wetland mitigation area. So for the benefit of the board, I'll give you a little bit of background here. As part of the civil engineering permitting process, Baltimore County reviews our civil drawings and determines if the site has sufficient forest planting, forest buffer, and wetland mitigation area. And if it does not, then they require us to either plant there or at some other place, what they call is forest mitigation bank. And when that is not available, then they charge us a fee. So this contract that you are seeing is to cover that cost for the capital projects. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Dixit, this is Mr. Kuhn. I, I'm, I'm very interested in this and I'm, I guess, curious as to the execution is, I see it's, is it Ecotone, Ecotone Incorporated out of Forest Hill is the, the one that's gonna be awarded the contract, I believe. Are they actually going to go onto our property and plant trees so the the where the trees are planted is decided by the county baltimore county if they are not able to find enough space in our site then they require us to go and go someplace else if that is not available then they charge a fee in lieu of that Okay, can I ask one other question real quick? Sure. So we own properties throughout the entire county, significant amount of area. Are we able to, instead of having to pay an in lieu fee to plant something somewhere else, can we just add forest to other land that we may currently have, or is it just restricted to to certain certain areas? <clears throat> So my understanding is, and I have the expert here, Mr. Plate, who's our site engineer. So Merrill, you want to handle that question? Certainly, be glad to. Uh, Mr. Kuhn, it's a good question. Um, the site bank um, actually is located within Baltimore County, and this company owns that site bank where the county allows us to plant. The problem with planting on our own sites, uh, and it's it's something that we have looked into, um, the difficulty is, is that it has to be placed within an easement. So if we do plant on our own property, we would have to permanently establish an area where we make the plantings that we cannot do any building. 
and this tends to limit us quite a bit on what we can do on that particular property. We are looking at using some of our forested land where we cannot um, put a school. We're considering to um, get permission from the county to consider those parcels uh, for future bank sites of uh, for forestation areas. All right, well, thank you for that explanation. Just so I understand this, this company actually owns space that is a Baltimore County land bank? Correct, and they're doing the planting on that. They're putting it completely under an easement so that they can then plant the trees and they do that using the money that they get, not just from us, but from developers and other people that develop within Baltimore County. So I see that there was one vendor <laughs> with one bid. Is Are there any other vendors that do this in Baltimore County or are we in essence single source because of this law? No, we're single source because there's only one vendor um, and it fluctuates. Um, they may end up uh, planting completely on their site, in which case uh, another vendor may pop up and get authorized by the county and we would bring to you a, a contract in the future to uh, replace this one uh, with another vendor or if another vendor comes up and this one has not been maxed out we would modify this contract uh, to include the, the second vendor that was approved by the county mm -hmm. okay well i appreciate your answers i would i would strongly suggest that we find space that we have and do this ourselves instead of spending this significant amount of money elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Ms. Hen, did you have any questions? I did. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, is there a requirement or is there preferential treatment given to reforesting in geographic areas where um, these capital projects take place? Meaning, are we targeting reforesting in the same areas? Um, where our projects are, are happening? Not to my understanding. It doesn't have to be in the same area. As long as it's within the county? That's right. Okay, thank you. Any thank other you. questions? Um, no, actually, I, I kind of don't agree with it, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll move on to the next contract. So the next contract is for a right-of-way agreement. Contract number ARA 201-22. It's a right of way agreement to relocate an existing uh, pole along the Gum Spring Road onto the Board of Education property. Um, and it is moving the pole from our property to our property on the other side. And that's part of the site drawings that, uh, that we have. And it will... Uh, it, it will improve our site design. So Baltimore Gas and Electric will have the right to enter that to take care of any maintenance issue. That's the purpose of the right way. And it requires board approval. Thank you, Mr. S uh, Dixit. Any questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Thank you. The next item is LKO 424-18 psychiatric evaluations and uh, this is a contract modification for continued psychiatric evaluations and we are recommending that we exercise uh, the first of two options to extend this contract for one year. Uh, there's no change in spending authority requested. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. So this is just a time. Um, Correct. Increase. It was a five year bid, three initial year term with two one year options. And this is the first option that we're requesting. OK, thank you. Are there any questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Sarah, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JMI 619-16, local telecommunications services. Um, this is a modification. Uh, we brought one recently uh, in June uh, because uh, the state had not yet approved its 
uh, Verizon contract. So we did a a short term extension. Now that the state uh, has a contract in place uh, under Maryland Department of Information and Technology, uh, we are asking uh, to uh, extend the contract uh, um, for this one year that to parallel the state's contract and increase spending authority for the next year of anticipated service costs. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Jones? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, does the state contract have any options to extend the current contract or are they just planning to rebid after the current contract expires? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I will uh, look that up and and report back. Okay, thank Thanks. you, Mr. Sarris. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. Uh, the next item, JMI six one eight dash one eight, information technology staffing services. Uh, this is a contract modification to uh, extend spending authority for one year. Uh, we have a, a five-year agreement, but we have uh, brought back this uh, contract for new spending authority uh, on an annual basis. So we're not changing anything else other than um, providing renewed spending authority. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Uh, Mr. Saris, uh, this is Mr. Kuhn. Um, Thank you. Just so that I'm clear, you're not modifying. You're you're adding 3.8 million dollars to a contract. Um, you're not changing the time frame or anything along those lines, correct? That's correct. The the vendors are the same. The five year term is the same. Um, but uh, what we're requesting, uh, based on our spending history. Is is one additional year of spending authority? So this is a, a significant amount of money, and my my question is, what it what are we focusing this three point eight million dollars on? Is it spread across all projects that are ongoing in the IT realm? Or are there specific things that are occurring? Therefore, we need $3.8 million more to pay for them in this upcoming year. Uh, this is uh, essentially an extension of the uh, contractors that we have regularly used to support systems in uh, the Division of Research Accountability and Assessment and the Department of Technology and sometimes uh, in the Department of Business Management Information Systems. So those are the three areas uh, of the system. There are a variety of projects uh, that each division uh, of ongoing projects that each division maintains. Is Mr. Saris, is, is this expansion of funding being driven by um, basically the ransomware attack that we we sustained? No, this is uh, essentially unrelated to that. They're separate contracts um, for the ransomware related issues. So um, in the course of a year, we have between 20 and 30 contractors that are uh, typically on staff, they may one may drop out, but that project continues and they would be replaced uh, with a person of like skills. Right, so I, I, I guess my point is this is a significant contract already. And you're adding a significant amount to it. Um, and you're not. It still has. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. It's still ending on the same day. It still started in the same day. 
So when I see more money going into a contract, that means you're doing more than you anticipated or cost of accelerated or something has happened. So I'm trying to understand what that is and it's not clear at all. Well, as you can see, we've spent um, approximately $9.8 million of an $11 million spending authority. And we spend on average $3.6 million dollar or 3.3 million dollars a year so what we're requesting is the authority to maintain the contractor staff that we have in place for existing projects for one more year we are not adding the number of contractors we're not increasing the amount of spending authority that we had in the prior year we are simply asking to renew, uh, to extend one more year of that same $3.8 million authority uh, to maintain our staff of contracted IT professionals. So I'm, I'm <laughs> you're expanding our spending every year more than initially proposed and approved. And I'm asking why? Uh, doing more work that because initially the board balked at approving a five-year spending authority so the superintendent at the time decided to bring this back for a smaller amount each year to satisfy that concern that the board expressed at the time so mr Sarah's there was no scope change or there was no additional scope item added was just the board had requested for a smaller uh, the board was uncomfortable with doing a five-year spending authority to match a five-year contract because it's, it's a large number mm -hmm. but we have routinely maintained a staff of IT professionals as contractors we don't have the FTEs or the ability to recruit these types of positions Okay, so this is actually the original contract. You're kind of bringing it up. The, the original default. contract, uh, if the board would like to provide spending authority through 2023, that's an alternative. Uh, it can do something else as well. But what we've got here is one year authority to continue our existing staff of IT contractors. We're not adding positions we're not changing projects okay. all right and then the expectation is next year you're going to come and ask for approximately the same amount correct all right now i understand a little better thank you great committee members any more questions hearing none um Mr. Sarris, please proceed with presenting the last contract. Yes, the last item, CWA 119-21, cloud-based school lunch system. Uh, so this is a new four-month contract uh, to extend the system that we had in place since 1992. Uh, it was upgraded once in 2009 and in 2011 the system was acquired uh, and the, the name of the vendor changed but it is essentially the same system and uh, we're requesting this four-month extension uh, until a, a new cooperative long-term contract is available in November 2021 at which point we will come back to the board. All right, thank you, Mr. Sears. And this is the My School Bucks. Correct. Okay, Ms. Hen, please proceed. Thank you, Ms. Joe. So I was excited to see this contract come up um, for approval. It's um, exciting to see the functionality of being able to process um, free and reduced meal apps through the My School Apps application. That's something that I've been asking about for quite some time. So I'm curious as to the implementation timeframe, if that will be available for this school year or if we're looking forward for the 22 um, 23 school year and also I see two parts of this question um, that this is being funded through the operating budget and I'm curious to know whether federal fund funding is also available since we will be um, processing free and reduced meal applications or if any other um, sources of federal funds are available for any of 
the components um, of the tech. We don't have any USDA funds that are available uh, for this application. Um, and it is largely self-funded by the fees. And uh, Ms. Levenstein will correct me, but I don't think we're changing any functionalities. I believe we're maintaining the existing system. Is that correct? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We too are excited for this new program. <laughs> so, is it not? Is it not? I think, yeah, if you hit. Hello. That one works. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. This will move to a cloud based system. Mm -hmm. So it'll embrace both my school bucks and my school apps under one program. We're so excited. For the remainder of this year, for the beginning to the end of this year, all meals are free for students. So once we've got the licenses in place, the training, new computers, everything, we'll get everything uh, going. Paper applications will be available upon request this year, but this will move it to a cloud-based system and we're so excited uh, to have this. So um, the, um, the name of the cloud-based program is called Mosaic, okay. but it is a Heartland product. It's what we already do. It's a result of the of the ransom. And online apps will be available as an option for next year. Is that, am I understanding um, you correctly? This would be uh, the program that would be responsible for it until we're up and running, because mm -hmm. if, if everything goes tomorrow, we'll give them the call and we'll get started. But in the interim, we'll just have a paper application and help parents and, you know, with the languages and everything. So we're good to go with those that need it upon request. And are there any options for families um, for whom the fee is not feasible who want to use the My School Bucks program to pay for lunches? Um, you know, there is a user fee mm -hmm. that goes along and it is passed on to the family. So the families pay for that fee. Um, because we've suspended it right now, we don't want any cash coming in or any families placing money on those accounts. In fact, they're asking for refunds and we're providing those. They're entitled to their money back. When we're ready to go back to accepting cash, whether it be for meals or a la carte or whatever, we'll have to notify families of that fee. Um, and at the moment, we have not thought about those that could not afford the fee. We just haven't come up with us. So in your conversations, and I've had conversations with other board members about this, there are families that fall in the spot between not being eligible for free or reduced meals, but also for whom that fee is prohibitive, who may want to take advantage of the My School Bucks program. So I right. just ask in your conversations if you could keep those families sure. in mind. Something to think about, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ms. Levenstein. Go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Levenstein, several years ago, a constituent cornered me about the fees. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't understand what he was saying until I think right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he described the lower socioeconomic family and that he couldn't put money on except periodically when he had it. So that might be, you know, every three or four weeks or whatever. So the fees he complained about was he was paying more fees over an extended period of time because he didn't have the, the money to actually put down at a one lump sum. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand what you're saying. Each and every time a family will exercise the My School Bucks program to make a credit card prepayment, each and every time you do that, the fee is assessed at that time. Okay. So it's better, to, in our opinion, to make one large, say, uh, payment and pay it once. And then each time the student debits down until it gets to a point of alerting them that they're running out of money or some such thing. When you go back in, you have to pay the fee again. You see the catch 22 there to me is the family that can least afford it is the one that's paying the fee monthly because they don't have it to actually put down that bump sum. But the fee, yeah, I don't know. It's something that you that spring forth tonight. I had not thought about that. Um, 
in lieu of um, it's not something that we retain. It is it is retained by the third party, the outside credit card company. It gets that fee. It's just a user it fee. It's a convenience fee. Absolutely. Right. We always take cash and checks, though, if they would want to give us money to prepay an account. Though that's always an option in lieu of the credit card. OK. OK. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Mr. Harris, you had indicated that the this program, these program costs are covered by the fees. Were you referring to the fees that we're discussing now yeah. that are collected by parents? Yes. And so the 110,000, that's what we're talking, dollars and cents right. that would um, be incurred. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to make a decision as a board that we're going to absorb those costs for families and provide this as a service, um, that's the dollar amount we would be talking about. My only question would be um, if if this is for both well, eligible and okay. non-eligible. This is the cost. I'm just going um, to pivot here for a minute. The cost that's associated tonight, what we're asking for, covers the migration from a web-based system to a cloud-based system. These are all the licenses and so forth. When the parent puts money on the account, that's only for that parent, that that user is putting in that money for the to use that My School Bucks account. Mr. Saris is saying the users, we're the users, it's food service is covering this cost, not the parents. This isn't the parent cost. So I imagine there are merchant fees, there, there are other fees that are passed along to the parents for using this to put deposit money onto their accounts. Only for My School Bucks. This is the whole comprehensive, right? This cloud-based lunch program system tonight that we're asking for is the whole migration from a web-based to a cloud-based system. It's our whole point of sale operation. It's our meal benefit application. It's, and it is my school bucks is one, one portion of this. But in order to obtain this program, there's fees involved and that's what the fee is. But as we're, we're self-funded, so in, in George's would help us if we couldn't meet that obligation with budget help separate that out and let's put this contract aside for a moment and I'll, I'll be brief. If we wanted to know if the board could receive that number, that information, if we wanted to absorb that cost for families for using the My School Bucks program for their accounts, is that information we could receive about what what fees do parents absorb? If we were to cover, say, four deposits per year for families that use that service throughout the system, right? is I that would, a number that the board could receive. I don't have that, that automatically, but Ms. Hen, the the fee is about two dollars and ninety five cents each time the family uses my school box. So if they if they create an account for their youngster, they put in twenty dollars. Their bank statement would say twenty two ninety five or twenty two fifty. The two dollars and fifty cent user fee is assessed at to the credit card company. So it would be difficult for us unless we internal internally absorb all the costs that's associated with that and that I don't have. This is to get the program going and started. Uh, we could work on that one. Uh, we open up or turn on my school bucks. It's turned off right now. We're not accepting any cash because all the meals are free, thankfully, to USDA. So excellent question. Some districts cover that user fee and that's something to explore, but I don't have that right now. And I, I you know, respectfully ask that we look at this simply for us converting from a web based to a cloud based system. Sure. I okay. think there's interest into other Absolutely. what other districts are doing to cover that. Right. Fee. And, and that'll give us time to research that, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Go ahead, Mr. Just let me see if another question. Okay. Is uh -huh. it a family account? If a family has four kids, do they have it have to account for each child? It's a student account. See, it's the so student it's uses this. So the student uses it, but obviously the adult or the parent or the guardian or the grandparent is, is putting in money for that child. It's a debit account, although it's charged. So if a family would prefer not to use a credit card and want to give us that same $20 that I just gave as an example, it would be a straight $20 cash. Okay. So what I was getting at is if there's four kids in the family, so each kid has his own account. It's Correct. Account. So then the father would have to put in four times 295. If that's what they would. 
if that's what they would elect to do each time they use my school box and a credit card, there's a fee assessed. They might be limited by credit cards. Really. That's, I just that sure. Thank you. But you know, there's uh, in colleges and in other uh, users when you use sometimes there's a user fee. When you buy tickets at Ticketron, there's a user fee. That's what this is. It's a user fee. So it's it's like anytime you use a credit card your merchant is giving up one or two or three percent of their profit and that's what this fee covers in this case thank you um Mr. Sarah, thank you Ms. levenstein and while there's interest on the board i know we're kind of conflating two issues but if you could come back maybe because right now like you said everything is closed if you could come back in the fall and give us a better understanding of how the board could waive that fee for our users, you know, I think that would be appreciated by the board members. That would be a good thing to move. Okay. This. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through 14 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Do I have a second? Second, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Um, the question is on the recommended approval of contracts one through 14 for board action. Those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Slate, please call the roll. Ms. Hen. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Kuhn. Aye. Mr. McMillian. Aye. Mr. Offerman. Aye. Ms. Jose. Aye. There being five in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts 1 through 14 will be moved forward to the board. Is there any further business? Because there is no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.